What's up? I am Lance Lee Davis with SoCal Spirit, and today I'm going to go over the usage, troubleshooting, and installation of the SoCal Spirit Twilight Muzzle. To turn it on, you're going to flip this switch to the right, and you turn to the left to turn it off. There are two operating modes. There's a high-powered mode and a low-power mode. In high power, you can expect about two hours or more of battery life. In low power, you can expect about five hours. Personally, I hunt with mine in low power mode most of the time. I use high power for extremely murky water or sometimes if the battery is getting a little bit low, there'll be some fall off in the brightness and I'll switch it into high power mode to get the last little bit of juice out of the battery for that. So to switch between modes, you're going to turn the switch on and off quickly. That, that will toggle between the modes. It can be a little difficult to see the difference in modes um, unless you're actually looking at, say, like a wall or something, or you're underwater, and then you can flip it on and off and see the relative difference in the modes. So there is a third mode. There is an extreme low power mode that the light will automatically switch into when the battery is critically low. It does this to protect the battery. Uh, lithium ion batteries can be damaged if they're over discharged, so this is an automatic feature. You can see this little muzzle just switched into the mode. It's uh, dimmed way down and it's strobing. When this happens, you have at least 10 minutes of kind of this emergency power. Sometimes they'll run a lot longer in emergency mode, but um, it's not intended for hunting. It's really just so that a boat on the water can see you, uh, see where you're at and it'll give you a little bit of light to navigate if uh, say you're shore diving and you need to get back to shore. Then the light will shut itself off um, without a lot of warning once it goes into this mode. So this is really like, this is your hey dummy type warning. All right. That brings us to recharging the muzzles. There is only one way in, that's through the charge port cover screen. So quick note on these is that never ever open your muzzle up if it's wet, okay? Salt water is always the enemy of electronics. These are really durable, they're incredibly well sealed, they're pretty much leak proof. But if salt water dribbles down into that port, it can corrode the port. There's electronic fail safes actually built into this muzzle that will keep it from frying and being destroyed forever if salt water gets in there in shorts. Uh, and I will cover that in the troubleshooting. But anyway, rule of thumb, don't open it unless your muzzle is clean and dry. So you just use a Phillips screwdriver to uh, open this guy up. Here's your screw. There's a gasket under there. I'll go over that in a bit. Put the screw somewhere safe. Then you can take your charger and plug it in. And then you're gonna plug this into the wall. When the light is red, it's charging. When it's green, it's done. These Chargers are a little bit quirky in that you need to plug it into your muzzle, then plug it into the wall. Um, it may not register that the muzzle needs charge if it's already plugged into the wall, and then you plug the muzzle into it. Um, I don't know why, but that was a quirk of these chargers that we got. So once it's charged, you're going to replace the screw. You can check the condition of the gasket. They last a very long time. Uh, this one is good. There's no cracks or leaks or tears. One quick note, um, I know a lot of you guys that have owned nice dive flashlights are used to putting silicone grease on the fittings. For these muzzles, it's not necessary and we do not recommend it. The reason is the tolerances are very small in there. If you get silicone grease in the charging contacts, it can be very, very difficult to clean it out. And of course, silicone grease is an insulator. So if it gets down in there on those contacts, it may be very difficult to plug in and recharge your muzzle. So to fit the screw back in, we're just gonna put it in. You always need to use a screwdriver. You'll never get it tight enough, of course, trying to hand tighten it. So we turn it until I can feel that, that gasket just starting to compress, and then I'm just gonna give it another quarter turn. That's all it needs. This is good to like 200 feet. Um, you can crank it down a little more if you really want, uh, but it's not necessary, and it'll put extra wear on your O-ring, which means you may have to change it sooner, and you need to be a little more aware of checking it to make sure that um, it doesn't have any tears or leaks. All right, let's talk troubleshooting. The worst thing that can happen to the unit is salt water in the charge port. There's built-in electronic fail-safes that will keep the unit from shorting out and frying if salt water gets in there, but if it happens on a regular basis, you can corrode the port and it will make it impossible to recharge your muzzle. That's not covered under warranty. 
So uh, I'm going to demonstrate a cleaning procedure. These are wired in such a way that they will even run while flooded. I'm going to demonstrate real quick here. Uh, switching this one on. This is a bucket of water and uh, it has no issues. I can flip it on and off underwater. This port is completely flooded at this point. Again, don't try this at home, I'm just demonstrating. But um, anyway, if you do get salt water in here, what you want to do is um, you can leave the light on or off. If the light is on, the charge port is actually inactive. So um, just leave it on. And all I would do is I would take, make sure that the screw is out and put it in a bucket of fresh water, rinse it, swish it around, really make sure that little port is completely cleaned out, shake it out. Um, if you have any rubbing alcohol, isopropyl, then it's a great idea to uh, hit it with a little bit of that. Shake it out, and and then you want to let it dry out. You can air dry it, or turn it up on the side and let it kind of drip out. Or if you have some office air, you can use that to spray it out. If you use a shock compressor to spray it out, you can do that, but you need to make sure that your shock compressor is really clean and that it's not just spraying water vapor and oil down there. So office air is always a safe bet. And it's dry, so it's good to go. I can put the, the cover screw back in or I can recharge it. That's the procedure for a flooded uh, charge board. Uh, one quick note too on this knob, if you keep turning to the left, um, you should encounter some resistance. If you keep turning, you will strip the screw out and leave debris in the hole. And while you can put a screw back in there, it's not covered in a warranty and it's not recommended. So um, again, if you get sand in it, just kind of open it up a few extra turns and give it a little rinse. Okay, so installation of the Twilight muzzle. It is more or less like any other spear gun muzzle, except that because it has a battery and electronics inside of it, you can't drill it, you can't hacksaw it. There's a few limitations. Um, if you need to make it fit into your barrel, you can sand here, and you can also sand down this guide track. I'm gonna show you in more detail where it's okay to modify and sand the muzzle. You want a very tight fit, but if necessary, you can shave down just a little bit of the diameter off of the plug end of the muzzle, marked here in green, or you can take some material off of the track guide at the top of the muzzle so that your spear shoots straight and matches the track guide of your actual barrel. The muzzles fit very nicely in most of the modern carbon fiber barrels, such as this Pathos barrel. Unfortunately, some of the older aluminum barrels, like this Cayman barrel, were smaller than 26 millimeters, so you've got to shave a little bit off of the plug end of the Twilight muzzle. We recommend using 100 grit sandpaper or a small file. Definitely no power tools, no hacksaws, no screwing, no drills. You don't want to damage the battery or electronics inside of the muzzle. To attach it to an aluminum barrel, we prefer to use stainless steel screws into the built-in inserts in the muzzle. Next, I'm going to demonstrate the installation of a Twilight muzzle in an aluminum Rob Allen barrel. The Rob Allen barrels are 26.5 millimeters, making them slightly larger than most of the others on the market. So I have made a tape guide with a piece of blue tape so I get a nice straight cut. I'm going to deburr it and then I will use a jig to drill mounting holes in the barrel. These mounting holes are very important. They need to line up properly. All of our retail partners have the jig. And next I'm gonna check everything. You can see how there's some give, so I'm gonna use a piece of Teflon shim tape. You can get this from McMaster Carr to shim up this muzzle and get it to fit properly in this Rob Allen barrel. We want a nice, snug fit always, which we're getting here. We can just barely get it in. And once it's in, I'm going to, again, check to make sure all of the mounting holes lined up between the ones I drilled and the pre-made holes in the muzzle. Then I'm going to plug the muzzle. Here I'm using some Aqua Seal. 
which is a good urethane glue. 5200 would also work well for this. You need to plug the muzzles because otherwise you'll get water in your barrel. You can also do a separate barrel plug, but the muzzles won't seal on their own without the help of a little sealant. So once it's in there, I'm going to screw it in, and then I'm going to level out the spear track. The spear guide on the muzzles is, is designed to be a little bit extra so that you can shave it down to match the spear track guide on your actual barrel. You need to do this so that your spear shoots straight. And so here we have a twilight muzzle on a Rob Allen barrel. Finally, I'm going to show you my favorite technique for plugging a carbon fiber barrel. I got this from Mori Mashiro. So it's just a cork plug with a cyanoacrylate glue to seal it. I'm using dry cork like you can get from a hardware store. I wouldn't recommend using something wet that came out of a wine bottle. So I've sanded it so that it's a really tight fit. And then I'm going to clean out the inside of the barrel using a little bit of goof off. This will get any kind of oily residues out. And once I've done that, I'm going to check the depth that I need to set this plug at to fit my muzzle. The muzzles usually are 53 millimeters, and I may set the plug at about 57 or 60 millimeters just for a little safety. So I'm going to tamp in that cork. It's a very tight fit, as you can see. I need a hammer to get it in. And once it is set deep enough, I will double check everything. Yep, we're okay. And then to seal it, I'm just going to pour in a little bit of this uh, AKA tire glue. It's a rubberized cyanoacrylate, which is basically a super glue. The AKA tire glue is one of my favorite underwater glues. I poured in a layer, just a few millimeters thick, and I'll leave it for 12 hours to set up. 